My personality is with the children. Like I get into the children. I want to play with them. And my boss says, you know, no, no, you have to fill out this paperwork. I'm like, do your own paperwork. I'm playing. <laughs> I don't, you know, want to be <laughs> doing all the, you know, administrative stuff. So I'm going to make you a little bit uncomfortable. Everybody needs to stand up. Okay. My preschool is called Joyful Noise Online. I can't hold the microphone and do this. But we're going to sing. If you know the song, you can sing it with me. If you don't, you can learn it and teach it to your kids because it's a great song to sing <laughs> to get them moving and then get them seated again at the end. So at the end, you actually go to a seated position. So it'll be perfect. Look at me reaching so high, high up to the sky. Tippy toe high, high, high. Look at me reaching so low, low down to the ground. Low, low, low. Look at me reaching so wide, wide side to side. Wide, wide, wide. Look at me slowly spin, slowly spinning around. Don't crash. And stop. And hop. And hop. And hop. And hop. And hop. And hop. And then you're ready for your story time or your calm activity and you just let them unwind with all those motions. Excuse me. I'm getting old. I need glasses. My parents told me this would come. Um, when Joy asked me to speak about employer, employee, excuse me, to employer, what happened when I made one simple shift to be my own boss? It was more than... It was more than one simple shift. There were many steps that it took to get to where I am now. But I will say that what I've learned is that I didn't have goals. I didn't like goals. I didn't want to set goals. It was like a New Year's resolution. Why set it if you're going to break it in two months? I'm just going to let it go. You know, if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't happy-go-lucky me. Yeah. And so if my husband said, you know, let's move to Pennsylvania. Okay. Let's move to Florida. No, he wouldn't say that. He, he was suffering in Florida last week. It was too hot. But um, I just went with the flow. And I had no goals of my own. I'm still kind of figuring that out. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Because my life has been service. I've served others. But um, Looking at the topic, I have my story that I'll share in a moment, but I did go on chat GPT and asked with this prompt, write a short speech about 10 sentences long from a woman's point of view, explaining what happens when I change from an employee to an employer. <laughs> Let's go. So I'll just uh, read briefly. <laughs> Chat GPT said, sure, I can help with that. <laughs> when you made the shift from being an employee to an employer, you likely experienced a lot of changes and your daily routine and your responsibilities. As an employer, you had to manage your own time and your resources as well as those of your employees. And this may have been challenging at first, but with time and patience, you likely became more comfortable in your new role. And I won't go on, but that was basically the gist of it, is that as an employer, even though I don't have employees, I am my own boss now because I'm a business owner. And I may hire employees in the future, but I like the freedom of being, not being told what to do, when I can use the bathroom, when I have to show up. Who to find to replace me when my kids are sick, as Terry shared. And that's just the life of working for somebody else. Um, I will say thank you, Joy, for giving me this opportunity to speak. I am not a public speaker normally. I work better with children than with adults. But I'm learning, and that's part of my journey. <coughs> and like many of you here that have your own preschool and are very successful with it, that 
is not the path I chose to take. When I met Joy back in 2021, although I think I was on your mailing list before that and didn't know it because it all went to spam. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> when I actually saw her online, I watched her YouTube videos. And I'm like, this is a real person. And I listened to her podcasts and I read her blogs and she was still doing that stuff six months later. I knew she was the real deal. She wasn't some fly-by-night scam person trying to take your money, because they had some of those too. But what I have learned over these two years, basically, is picking up the gold and just valuing that as how it changed my life personally. For those of you that don't know, my name is Lori Siegel. I grew up in Wisconsin in a very good family, had a very good education. And I've moved to Pennsylvania now in the beautiful Pocono Mountains. I have four children, three adults, one still at home. But I was taught growing up to go to school, get a job, start your own life, just like everybody else. And I knew I wanted to be a teacher, but you can't be a teacher when you're 16 and your parents say, get a job. <laughs> so I went to Burger King and said, can I get a job? Fill out an application, I got a job at Burger King. It was a job. That's what people do. I didn't think of it as a career. And later after I got my degree in college, I went to get my teaching job and just kind of, like I said, slid through life. K sera, sera. My boss told me to do this. Yes, sir, I'll do that. And I was happy teaching children, but that, like I said, there were no goals. There was nothing to achieve to. And I had no desire to be the principal I didn't want to be the superintendent of the school district or anything. I just wanted to be a teacher in my own little bubble world with kids doing what I love to do. Later on, as I had kids, stayed home, got a job, came home, had a kid, you know how that <laughs> raising kids go and you want to be home when they're little, nursing them and all. But when my older three were actually in school, I actually went back into teaching at a private school and I taught preschool there for a couple of years and I enjoyed it. But I saw the people over me, like stressing about this, that, and the other. I'm like, okay, you can keep, keep your little worries and cares. Just give me my preschool room, I'm okay. And I think I had eight kids at the time. It was beautiful, but it didn't pay. It barely covered my other kids' tuition, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is what I drive out to the school for every day, a measly check. But it was, I didn't see another alternative. It was just what life was. And, at the end of that preschool year, I found out I was pregnant again, later in life. And for any of you thinking, do not have children after 43. <laughs> Your body's not made for that. I don't know if any of you are mothers after 40. It was rough. And um, I'm revealing my age because he's a teenager now. <laughs> but <clears throat> it brought me home because I wanted to be home with my child. And my mom said, you can work from home. You can be a medical transcriptionist. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, I don't even like chemistry or science or anything. I don't learn all this vocabulary for no reason. But I knew I had mm -hmm. skills. And there was a lady in my church who said, there's Miss Margaret's music class or something. She teaches music in her house. You could do that. Could you sing and you act with the kids? I'm like, no, I can't. I can't, I can't have kids in my house. I can't do that. It was just that mindset, that shift in my mind. When you say you can't, you can't. But when you say you can, you can. You, you overcome those obstacles. And even, um, lost my train of thought though, when he was talking about having that confidence, if you go out there on Facebook or social media and tell somebody, this is what I do, they believe you. <laughs> that, um, that's just like, but if you go like, oh, I think I'm gonna start a preschool, or I don't know what I wanna do, they believe you. Yeah. You don't know what you wanna do. <laughs> so that confidence is there. You have to believe it first. Right. And part of joining All Stars is when I got involved in that challenge, and I saw, I basically stalked your Facebook page and said, you know, who is she, what does she want, what is she up to, How, who has she helped? And I finally connected with these people online. I'm like, this is my family. This is who I was looking for. So, 
I was, I was in a group active. I'm like, yes, good job. I can type encouragement, you know, encouraging words. And yes, I'll explain what I, you know, the step up. I don't know what you called it again. You learn something, you turn it around, and you teach someone else. <laughs> so when I walked in the, by <laughs> the room today, they're like, oh, I know you, Laura. You helped on Tech Tuesday. When it was on Tuesday, right, Beth? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> six months ago, I knew nothing about tech. <laughs> I did. I got the hub because I needed help with tech. But once I got it, and I watched the video five times before I could implement it because it wasn't syncing, I, I was able to turn around and say, yeah, I've been there. I know it doesn't make sense. Facebook page, Facebook group, Facebook profile, they're totally different things. <laughs> I'm still, still confused from time to time. But um, I later got a job at a learning center working with two-year-olds. So I started with sixth grade, worked my way down to two-year-olds, but I was still an employee. And again, I saw my supervisors, I saw the director of the center, and I'm like, I'm glad you have that job. I don't want your job. I am not a threat to you. Keep your little administrative world over there. That is not me. I want to, you know, just enjoy the kids. But I was limiting myself. And I had to realize that. That I thought, if you're willing to pay me, I don't even know what it was, $14 an hour for a child care worker. That's all I'm worth, $14 an hour. I'm worth more than that. I put in more effort than my coworkers. I was the one that said, get off the floor and work with the kids. Don't just watch them from afar and say, oh, he hit her. Like you're the teacher. So I, I was basically training my own staff. I should, I should have been paid to you know, train people. Um, but I see my, my, my worth now. So as I own my own business, I realize I can set my price. I can teach people the knowledge and skills that I have. Um, lost my place again too. My husband had introduced me to entrepreneurship several years back, but I was so hesitant because I wanted that security. I wanted that job. I wanted that weekly paycheck. I wanted the me um, medical benefits. I wanted everything. And he was going to do some crazy thing that cost tons of dollars that we didn't have, put it on a credit card, go into debt further. We're talking about debt. I'm like, eh, there's got to be a better way. And he didn't know what he was doing and he didn't have the proper mentor. Um, so part of it was when I saw a mentor, I'm like, she's the person I'm supposed to be following. And um, I had a heart for homeschool, homeschoolers. And now I'm like starting to homeschool my own child. So when I told my sister, I'm joining a group to tell me how to run a preschool, she said, you don't want to run a preschool, you want to run a homeschool. I'm like, I know, but Joy doesn't teach that. I have to learn how to run a preschool first. <laughs> and then I can build off that. So with the hub, I have built my preschool. I know how it works. I've built an affiliate marketing site. I built a funnel for my husband's real estate investment. He was doing quick funnels and paying way too much. <laughs> but um, he was connected to Zapier and SendGrid and all this. I'm like, no, it's all, it's all together in one. He's like, well, I need to send like 100 emails to these clients. I'm like, I can do that for you. I'll set up an automation. He's like, well, <laughs> I figured it out. I can do it. So I'm more in um, the behind the scenes rather than the actual teaching. But I did connect with a homeschool group, and I'm in the process of contracting with them to be their teacher <laughs> and to help them run their subscription business as well. But um, my heart is training parents how to parent their own children, doing the things that I did with my kids when they were little. I didn't just ship them off and throw them in daycare. I was working with them even when they were young. Um, back up again. When people said you have to give up everything you were ever told and change your way of thinking, and that's the mindset change, I was scared because I thought, I was taught about God, how to obey my parents. I love my family. Don't make me give that up. And that wasn't it at all. I, I couldn't see how those two things coincided. When people said, start your own business, they showed off their fancy cars, their designer clothing, their million dollar homes, and that actually turned me off. I'm like, I don't want any of that. I don't want to be a millionaire. I actually said that out loud to my husband. 
But he said, what if God wants you to be a millionaire so you can help other people? So I had to think, think that through and break that negative mindset. It's not about the money, it's about serving others. And like you said, I, that's what I gave. But we had taken it to the point of sacrificing everything we had to help others that we didn't have anything left to give. We had drained ourselves. And I was telling somebody today, my husband's like, oh, that guy in the street, he needs $30. I'm like, we need to pay our electric bill. You can't give a guy $30 you don't have. Like, we literally need to pay the bill, not this poor homeless man. I feel sorry for him, but I didn't have the money to give him. But that can change, because God can bless. So, fast forward three decades, because I live longer than that. I acknowledge that God has made me more than just a teacher. And in that breakthrough to break free, I found out I am a leader. I was born to be a leader. And he's given me the tools and the people, including the mentors and the friends and all of you sisters, to build a business that can touch so many more lives than just a couple dozen people in my classroom each year. I have a larger audience to serve. As a business owner, I don't have those limits placed on me by an employer. I will be the first to admit I'm not perfect, but I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, as God said in Psalm 139, 14. I still struggle with fear, but God has given me the strength of love to overcome those fears. And as an older woman, I can say, I can count it an honor to be able to teach the younger women what I've learned in my years of experience, I do not take granted, take, take for granted the people that God's placed in my life, young and old, who have, who can bring out my potential. And it's been a transformation for me. I've had the privilege of helping others in preschool all-stars, in my homeschool group, in my family, in other marketing groups. And I haven't arrived, but I'm growing and it's part of my journey and I appreciate the hero's journey because I can see a little bit more of the path that I'm supposed to be on. It's not a straight line in the least. As a business owner, I don't currently have employees, but in the future I may. And what I like about being an employer rather than an employee is I have the freedom and taking it upon myself to create my own coming income, finding my true worth, creating a business I can be proud of. When I was an employee, I was led to a job that had I had to ask to leave or take a break. I was limited in my income, and I had to call and follow their plan. I felt like I was disposable and that I could easily be replaced if I didn't meet their expectations. But now as a business owner, I'm making decisions for me and my family instead of someone following someone else's demands, when to show up, how to handle certain situations. I'm eternally grateful to Joy and everyone who believed in me before I believed in myself. And this group of sisters has been very life-changing. I desire to be an inspiration to all that it is possible to take control of your life. I'm cheering for each one of you as you tackle the hurdles that are in front of you. We're all different, and you are all, we're all headed toward a similar goal of being a business owner, no longer an employee. Woo! Thank you.